What's up you guys? On this episode of Doing Stuff with Hopper, we're gonna look inside this air relief valve vault and see if there's water. So, hang out, check it out, we'll see what we can see. Alright you guys, here's the second one we're gonna look in. Hopefully it's dry. The last one we looked in wasn't so dry inside. There's about six inches of water and that's groundwater. So we'll have to pump it out and then figure out how to get the contractor to seal it up some more. But let's check this one out. Oh yeah, this has got a couple feet of water in it. Can you see? They're supposed to be dry. But they're not. So we got this crane on the truck. Super handy. And I got this magnet. It's a, it's a mechanical magnet. It weighs about 12 pounds. And oh I don't know, it has a right there it says 800 pound working limit. So solid, and you take your lever. And you move it to the side and attaches and then you put your lever back I gotta do it with two hands you take your lever you relock it you're good to go it's like a robot hand all right so we're gonna go check out another one it's not the big big lid right right here so I can use conventional methods to open it. And by conventional methods I mean the old fashioned hooks. Goodness it's warm out today. Granted it's no Midwestern 96 degrees with 99% humidity but uh, it's like in the 80s, mid 80s it feels like. But the plus side is there's very low humidity, if any at all. So here's our next location. But the rooms, so someone's fixing it to get yelled at. And it, it's not me. Well, I'll be doing the yelling, but I'm not getting yelled at for this. So, walking back to the truck. You want to see some money? Come out here. Freaking oodles of it. Look at that. Right there. You see that? It's a flatbed Chevy. It's like a Kodiak chassis. Like a 5500 whatever Chevy Kodiak. It's like a $100,000 toter right there. All for a bumper bumper pull travel trailer. Look at all the Can you see the polywogs? Not cool, not cool at all. Well, 
Well, I'm not gonna do any more. I'm gonna assume they're all full of water, which is really freaking sucks. All right, you guys, so I'm in here out at the lift station at River Run. I'm in our O2 generation unit. Um, got a bit of an alarm going on. It's saying the ambient air O2 is at 19.5%, which uh, is fine for here, but it's an alarm and it's not happy, so I gotta figure that out. Uh, the biggest thing I'm concerned about inside this unit with O2 alarms is too much O2. Like if it gets up to like 24, 25%, then we gotta worry. Uh, I know that that alarm isn't anything to be worried about because there is nothing that uses oxygen in here, in this unit. Everything is uh, electric and like I said, there's no combustion sources or anything like that. So I just gotta check out the alarm and see what's triggering it and figure out what's going on there. Anyway, but to show you, so I've got the air compressor. This compresses the air, the ambient air, takes it you know, from atmospheric pressure, compresses it, moves it through this system here. This is the air set unit. And uh, through a series of magic and other things, converts, or I guess removes, the oxygen from the atmosphere purifies it and discards the remnants out out there from there the pure oxygen which is about 95 percent o2 gets pumped into the storage tank and from the storage tank goes back out to the compressors these two small gas compressors compress the o2 the purified oxygen and injects it into my force mains i have two force mains an 8 inch and a 4 inch and depending on which one is running for which part of the season uh, well that determines which force main is running obviously at build out peak season we're gonna be running the 8 inch um, but right now we're running the 4 inch anyway pretty sophisticated system in here but with sophistication comes pain in the butt systems that you got to diagnose and troubleshoot and if I can't figure out then I gotta spend money on a controls guy to come up and look at it so that's what I'm doing I'm doing lift station checks otherwise besides that alarm everything's looking good so can't complain about that People are like, Hopper, why so much animosity towards River Run? Well, let me first start off by saying the place is nice. Like, the concept is cool. The, uh, the amenities are world-class. It's beautiful. The landscaping is nice. Um, beautiful people, beautiful RVs. It's just, it's a great place. However, the problem arises with the infrastructure that was put in and the infrastructure that was rehabilitated. Um, yeah, when you're working with a big developer, they care nothing. And I don't care what they say in meetings with town council or what they say to planners or anything like that. Developers behold to shareholders. And that's, that's okay, that's, that's fine because that's who, you know, that's how they pay their mortgage. They keep the shareholders happy. But the problem is they come in to small communities like ours, they promise us the world and there's certain members of our community that are a bit more gullible than others and so then they swallow those promises hook line and sinker and then oh guess what it didn't come to fruition or we don't like how things turned out and i'm like why are you surprised by this this is how developers work this is their mo um 
they cut co they cut corners to s cut costs they cut corners to speed up the process you know they're just trying to keep everybody happy that uh, pays their pays their paycheck so anyway my problem with the development is not necessarily uh, you know the actual concept of a high-end high-class RV resort my problem is the way it went about and the way it was done and the way it was handled and now the district is left with this giant mess that I spend an exorbitant amount of my time dealing with and I shouldn't have to do that I got much bigger fish to fry than dealing with uh, these guys out there but guess what I'm stuck with them so anyway that's an explanation on where my animosity towards River Run and um, Smith Creek comes from overall it's just angst towards Sun communities more so than anything so that's an explanation there's great people that work out at the resort and the people that work there are trying to do a good job and for the most part they are doing a good job and it is beautiful I like it it's just it's just taxing on one's mental health at times so hey guess what I've just been vlogging from the truck it's like what all like 30 something year old males do they sit in their trucks while they're driving and rant but what what can i say that's what i know anyway hopper out Bada boop